Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of In The Studio, a live virtual listening party. Today on the show, I have singer-songwriter Lamita Reed Guy. Lamita, thank you so much for being on the show today. Please let the viewers know a little bit more about yourself. Well, good morning, Martinique. I'm so glad to be on your show today. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. My name is Lamita Reed Guy. And um, I've been living in the Richmond area probably for the last, I'd say, 15 to 17 years. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm married to Linwood Guy. We have one daughter, Chanel. And I have been writing music probably since college. I first had an interest in writing music when I was a member of a group called Ebony Impact at Old Dominion University. And the director there wrote a lot of our music that we performed. So I said, you know what? I think I want to try my hand at writing, and that's where it first started. And I've been singing pretty much all my life since I was about three or four years old. Uh And I love singing. I also am a musician, and I play the piano at um, several different churches in and out of the area every Sunday. So I just have a love and a passion and a desire to share the gift that God has given me, which is music and singing and writing and performing with the world. So being on a platform like this, you know, is a great opportunity to be able to do that. Definitely. And you're in the Virginia area, correct? Yes. What in part Vir- of Virginia are you? We are in Hopewell, which is a little bit, I would say, southeast of the city of Richmond. Okay. Okay. I use- Fort Lee. For those in the military that are familiar with Fort Lee, we're like a hop, skip, and a jump from Fort Lee. Okay, okay. I actually used to live in Alexandria. So I only know that Alexandria, um, Arlington. Right, (laughs) Northern Virginia. Okay, okay, okay. So um, I would like to um, play your first song. Now, the first song that I'm actually going to be playing is called Victory. And this is actually a song that she wrote, y'all.
something. This is why I'm so excited about this show is because I love music. I just feel like music really just helps you, you know, through your ups and downs, you know, just in life. And so when I was sampling your songs, I'm just over here tapping my foot. I'm like, this is so <laughs> like this is so good. That's um, so exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> yeah. So what inspired you to actually write that song called Victory? Well, you know, sometimes, like you said, in day-to-day -day life, mm -hmm. it's hard to even get up and get motivated to do things. Yeah. And I've been blessed to be able to sing at military establishments and for soldiers and wounded soldiers and um, families that have lost soldiers at war. And one of the things that the chaplain taught me is to get up every day and to walk in victory because you never know, you know, when you're going to leave this earth. So get up do what you need to do, put your best face forward. Even if you don't feel like it, do the best you can to walk in that victory because it's yours, it's yours from birth. Mm -hmm. So you have to grasp it, you have to hold it, you have to own it and your victory is, is inside you. So that song is just to get people to get up, think about the good things in life, get moving, get going, don't let the devil turn you around and just go for it. That's good, that's good. So I know that you mentioned that you um, have sung for a lot of military people. Are you a part of a military family? Well, I have a brother that's retired military. Um, okay. And then my husband is also, he was ex-military. Ex um, okay. But I have a sister-in-law who actually worked at Fort Monroe for a while. And she introduced me to the chaplain that has actually gotten me into Fort Eustis, um, Langley, um, uh, not Belvoir, uh, Aberdeen Proving Ground. So mm -hmm. I've been in different places singing different for for breakfasts, the national prayer breakfasts, the prayer luncheons and things of that nature. Oh, that's good. That's good. So um, I just want to let you all know again that all of Lamita's um, contact information is in the description box. If you like Man, I really like that song. I want to purchase that song. Um, her email address is in the description box. And um, she does respond to her Facebook messages. So, you know, her Facebook page is in there as well. So we're going to go ahead and listen to her next song. It's called Committed to Give You Praise. Whatever it takes to make it through Whatever you ask of me I will do I'm obligated to worship you And created to give all praise to you You have my heart You have my mind You have my soul Take control My source and my strength to you I will give all glory that's to your name forever. I'm committed to give you. Yeah. 
in writing music though because you know sometimes we'll watch um, America's Got Talent and we'll be thinking how in the world did they even get past <laughs> to be on the show because they are horrible <laughs> so <laughs> did you always have that confidence in singing and um, writing songs you know I, I was not confident at all um, in the beginning I had a lot of self doubt and I did not think that I was as good as people said that I was. You know yeah. how you do things because you feel that, you know, you have a gift and a talent for it, but you don't realize, you know, what other people hear when they hear you, what they see when they see you. And a lot of people come to me and say, you, you just don't know, you know, how you make me feel or what your music does for me when I listen to it. Sometimes they say, I can just close my eyes and I'll just drift off into somewhere because your music is so soothing and it's so powerful. So it took me a while to get comfortable in that and comfortable in that skin. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm much more confident now about what I do and why I do it, because I do understand that it's not for me, but it's for me to share with other people. And you actually wrote that song. What really just helped you and motivated you or did something happen to, that really helped you to write that song? Well, the first two lines of that song I wrote probably more than 15 years ago. 
Wow. Okay. Yeah. Whatever it takes to make it through, whatever you ask of me, I'll do. Mm -hmm. um, was a part of a wedding song that I was writing as lyrics as for, for a man and a woman. And then when I was sitting with my producer in the studio, he said, let's take the first two lines of that song and then let's work on it from there. So we started working on it and working on it. And it's all built around um, those challenges that we face in life. We know God's there, but sometimes we feel like we're so far apart from God because we're going through so much one thing after the other, and you can't get over one thing before something else hits you and something else happens. And mm -hmm. when you're going through the loss of a job and the loss of your parents and the loss of this and the loss of that, and you just get caught up in all of that loss, it's hard to still say, okay, God, I'm going to praise you and thank you anyhow, yeah. in spite of my circumstances. So I had to make a commitment that no matter how bad it got, I know where my hope comes from. And that's from God. So I've committed myself to give him praise. Whatever, is, whatever I'm going through, whatever he asks of me, I'll do. So that's where that came from. So I know that you said that you wrote the first two um, lines about 15 years ago. How do you, as a creative person and a writer, how do you put something on the shelf for that long and not be anxious to share it with people because I know me sometimes and a lot of times you'll hear people say oh you need to just put it out there you know but for you to have that for so long and then wait until you fully created you know or develop the song to your liking how did you have that patience to just hold off until it was the way that you wanted it to be that is an excellent question and I really can't give you a specific answer as far as how it all came together the way that it did. Mm -hmm. um, but having the passion to write music and when you write something and it comes from your heart, it never leaves you. Mm -hmm. So it seems like I was in a position where I wanted to move forward with it, but other things around me were happening that I needed to take care of and needed the attention more than the music did at that time. So okay. I, I kind of put it on the back shelf, but not really. Okay. I just kind of put it on reserve. Gotcha. And then when all the pieces and parts came together for this whole song to be written and created, it did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the next song that we're going to listen to is Greater Is He. First John 4.4 4 says that greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. Come on, Rizal. To God, he is so great. Great I know. He's king of kings. Everything to me.
I mean, so that is such a, a great song. Um, so I know that you can't see this, but I actually get up, you know, when <laughs> when your songs are playing, and then I be dancing on the side. <laughs> <laughs> so people, I wonder where you went. No, girl. So people don't see me, <laughs> but it's, I know, right? <laughs> so that's one of the songs that I feel like I would be bumping in my car. Um, <laughs> with the music just like really loud, but um, what inspired you for that song? That's a really good one. Well, you know what? When we were talking the last segment, this is actually a song that I wrote probably back in 2005 or 2006 that also kind of sat on the shelf because other things were going on in my life at the time, and I just didn't have the right people, I would say and resources around the table to get it up and get it going and get it recorded like it should be. Okay. So I had an original version of it. So this is kind of like a um, refreshed, updated, revamped version of the song. And I had the um, privilege and opportunity to work with a guy named Jojo Clark and he's out of the Richmond area and he's a part of a group called Resound. So okay. all the background vocals that you heard on each of my songs has been them. So I just oh, okay. want to give a shout out to them Resound, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Jojo, thank you. And Jarius in the recording studio, the engineer, thank you so much because these songs would not have be what they are without you guys. So yeah, but that's one that's greater to see. It's like a, um, a more than a conqueror, um, overcomer. Nothing's going to keep me down, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to pump this like you yeah, said. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So is there anywhere that people can actually purchase these songs? You can actually get in contact me, get in contact okay. with me, and uh, you can contact me at Lamitha, L-A-Y-M-E-T-H-A at gmail.com. Um, and I will be able to point you to where you can get these songs. I'm in the process of getting them. I have some out on CD Baby and I have, and I have some out on iTunes. Okay. So you can go out there and look. If you cannot find them, Call me at 804-677-8485. Okay. And I actually have um, Lamita's email address in that um, description box as well. So do you only sing and write Christian songs? No, I've been singing, actually started out in R&B um, okay. back in 1987. I'm telling my age. Um, <laughs> Uh, and uh, that was actually, I was actually offered um, a recording contract from Capitol Records back oh, wow. in Starstream Communications. There was a radio station called WOWI in Norfolk, Virginia, and they had a competition called the Budweiser Showdown. Mm -hmm. And it was this competition nationwide where you would write songs and jingles for Budweiser advertising, radio, television, um, print ads, and things like that. And travel and then promote the Budweiser brand. Okay. So I actually won first runner-up in that, received a recording contract from a oh, button. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's how I started out. Very, very early um, singing R&B material. And I do sing at weddings, um, parties, things of that nature, um, you know, like anniversary parties and things of that nature where uh, people always request like At Last from Etta James or something by Whitney, I Will Always Love You, or um, something by Aretha Franklin or something like that. So mm -hmm. I try to open myself up and step outside the box. I love gospel music, but I do love all types of music. So yes, yeah. I'm open to writing and singing. Definitely. So now we're actually going to play a song that you did not write, but it's a hymn, correct? Right. Um, he looked beyond my fault. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise, for it was grace that upon my liberty. Just why he came to love me so He looked beyond my faults 
producer of this project committed to give you praise that was joseph or jojo clark nice he's phenomenal is he he's phenomenal and he's in the virginia area with you yes he is in richmond virginia yes he is okay okay let me ask you this what would you say to individuals um that may not be as confident as you are now in their writing skills what encouraging words would you say them i would say continue to write always continue to write always continue to write from your heart um and and let people know that you know this is something that is personal to you so you're putting it down on paper but you're writing it not just for yourself to express your feelings but there's somebody else out there that's probably going through so when yeah. you can remove yourself from the situation and put yourself in a position to use 
the words and the expressions and the, the passion in the music to share it with other people to probably help them or, or hopefully help them along the way, then it kind of takes a little bit of the fear and, and lack of self-confidence out of it. Because if you trust God to put down on pen and paper what he's given you, mm-hmm. it's meant to bless somebody. Yeah. So don't worry about so much it being, you know, is it perfect? Is it going to be good? What are people going to think? It's a gift and it's a talent and it's a passion. It's something that God gave you from the time you were born. So be confident and bold and step out and trust yourself in the process and just continue to write and continue to write. And he'll bring the right people around you to make it come to fruition. He will. That's good. You're actually going to be singing at a couple of churches uh, in July. And I actually have all of those churches um, listed in the description box. Now, all of those churches are in Virginia, correct? Yes, they are in Virginia. Two of them are actually in the Richmond area. And then one is over in the northern neck. There may be some people watching that are familiar with Northumberland County or Lancaster County or Whitestone area. Shallow Baptist Church is over in that area. And um, then the other, yeah, the other two are in the Richmond area. Okay. okay. We're actually at the same church twice a month. And then we're at a different church the other two months. And I say us because I'm uh, speaking of my husband, Luma, because he also plays bass guitar. So okay. we play together. I do the singing, but he, he, he does the playing. Okay. okay. And I play piano as well. So. Okay. Excellent. So now how did you get over stage fright? Was that ever something that you struggled with? I'm still not over stage. Right. <laughs> right. I think that's going to be around forever. Uh-huh. Um, it just depends. I always start off nervous, even though if I played or sung a song a thousand times, I always start off a little bit nervous because I think it's just my um, spirit. You know, I'm just, I, I want it to be received well. So I get a little nervous, but then yeah. I, 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 I step away from myself and I, and I let God, be God centered. And that allows me to forget about the fear and the, 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 the stage fright and just move forward. And then a lot of it has to do with um, how the audience reacts to you. Mm-hmm. And that's whether it's secular music or, or, or gospel music. If people just kind of sit there and stare at you, yeah, um, it makes you a little bit more nervous. Mm-hmm. Um, but if the audience is more re, uh, interactive, then it kind of puts you at ease. Because I remember the first time I did I Always Love You by Whitney Houston. It was a crowd of people there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I got it to the part where it marginalized, she goes, Hanna! That part, uh-huh. Uh-huh. it was like, yes! So, I mean, it was <laughs> fantastic. Uh-huh. You know, because I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. So, it's the good audience interaction and it's the comfortableness of just kind of letting yourself go and let God. Thank you again for just taking time to be on the show and allowing us to hear your songs, um, just to to also see how gifted you are at writing songs today. Well, thank you, Martinique. I appreciate the opportunity. It's been a pleasure and a joy. And I just thank you from the bottom of my heart. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you all again for tuning into the show. Make sure you go ahead and share this video now so more individuals will get to know um, Lamita Guy as well as her her talents and skills as a singer and songwriter. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel as well, Martinique the Storyteller, and I hope you all have a blessed day. Bye-bye.